chance to, to finally get in on on the field in a game uh, finally on Sunday after all the hard work? Oh, yeah. I'm um, definitely excited. Game week. Um, football's back. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I don't think you ever gotten to face the Saints. How much are you looking forward to the opportunity? What are some things that stand out about their defense? Um, yes, um, it's going to be fun. Uh, never played against the Saints before. I don't know what it is with, you know, the Saints, but uh be fun to finally uh, get to play against them, go to that stadium, always hear how loud it is. The atmosphere is always great. Um, so, you got a great defense, um, physical, fast, uh, some good veterans over there. They got, they'll fly around to the ball. Um, it's going to be tough. They're good in the run, so we got um, got to make sure we're locked in. Starting the football season still fire you up the same way it did maybe when you were – High school or college or first couple of years here or is it now just business? No, it's always been the same. Um, I love football. Um, the playing since I was five years old. So, anytime you get ready for a game, this game we get always excited. It's a different team. I think twenty four new guys are from last year. Just based on what you built, maybe during the course of the off season, what do you think about the squad? Maybe going into into week one. Oh, it's been fun getting to know everybody, um, getting the new guys acclimated to how we do things, um, seeing guys work and, um, you know, improve every day since we since we got back, since I've gotten back, and just trying to help anybody possible. And, um, you know, just finally to put it all together, uh, finishing up this week and getting ready to head into Sunday. Are you looking forward to, to hitting and being hit and getting some physicality on Sunday then? I mean, that's the nature of the game, so i uh, got to go out there and um, – Run, um, run with my pass and do the best I can to help us win. New Talk offense, do you feel like some excitement about unveiling something, something on Sunday? Just excited about the offense in general, us to get right, us to get out there and um, put the plays together that we've been practicing and repping um, throughout the off season and through training camp and let us see all see it all come together and playmakers make plays. To what degree do you think people will be surprised by, by what we see as compared to what we've seen in, in the past from the offense? I guess we have to wait and see. And about building chemistry with the new O line. Now that week one's finally here, how much confidence do you have in that new starting unit? Oh yeah, uh, I mean they've been been working hard, been doing a great job, um, all season throughout camp, um, building chemistry, um, and um, you know, getting acclimated to what we do with the new guys. And I feel like they've been doing a great job being physical and um, playing how we want to play. And um, I know they're they're excited as well to get out there and um, finally put the pass on a different jersey um, in the regular season. And um, you know we we'll all. Do it on Sunday. You say play how you want to play. What specifically do you mean by that? I think everybody knows how style how we want to play, and especially in the run game, how physical we want to be, dominate the line of scrimmage, um, come off the ball, um, beat the man in front of you. And I think they know that stuff we preach, and you know they hear it every day, and that's what we try to do. We come out here for practice. Derek, how do you describe uh, how your relationship with Tajay has evolved? Um, yeah, I mean, just trying to be um, in any help I can possible to help him. With this game and through the years, the stuff that I've learned and my my experience, um, he's a smart a smart guy. Um, comes in, um, attended up in meetings, um, tries to bring it out to the practice field. Uh, try to be very detailed on what he does, and he and he works hard. And I think y'all seen that in the preseason. So I'm excited to see him, um, see what he does on Sunday. When you prepare for the Saints, what are some of the things that maybe jump out at you? And then how much is Week One about? not being certain about what exactly you're going to see sometimes. Yeah, the big thing is just watching film on them. Um, you know, see the things that they like to do, um, the uh, defenses that they're in, the different styles that they run, and then studying their, their best players on defense and um, you know, watching them on film and how they play against the run, how they play against the pass, just trying to get anything, um, you know, anything possible to uh, get an edge on them. But, you know, it's week one. You know, they're going to run stuff that we've we never seen. and. That's that's how it goes in the league. But you know, like I said, they're a great defense. They got great experience over there. They're disruptive. I got guys that fly around and get to the ball and great in the run. They're seeing you guys go into loud environments and have the first drive. You know, focus on you. You go in and you guys score. How much pride do you take into like that first drive right off the bat, shutting up the crowd? I mean, I I love the environment in in general. If it's loud, the crowd's into it. It's a big game. It's the first game, so I know it's going to be loud in the dome. You know, um, I've always seen it on TV, never got to play in there. I played in there in college, so it was loud. So I anticipate it being a, a great environment, something that, you know, I think we all look forward to and, and excited to play in. Derek, you set individual goals for yourself as you head into a season? No, never do. Has there been any, any moment since last year where you've allowed yourself to think at all about the potential that for you? Why are you emphasizing at all like that? <laughs> 
Because I know, I know if it has been, it's been small. That, that this could be a last hurrah for you and, and for, for Ryan. Um, just taking it one day at a time and um, not getting too caught up in it. I'm thankful that I'm able to make it to year to year eight um, and be playing for this organization as long as I have and try to be the best player I can um, each and every week and come out here and be a, a great leader for this team and try to help everybody get better in any way possible and just take it one game at a time. Um, Fortunately, I'm living my dream playing in the NFL, so not try to get too caught up in that, but just be thankful for what I have right now. If it is the last time, I imagine you two would want to go out like as big as big can get, right? Hopefully, that's in the plans. Um, I, I, I hope so, but I think just try to take it one step at a time, and um, whatever happens, happens. But we definitely want to go out there and ball out and you know, leave my mark. You mentioned year eight. Realistically, in your mind, how many more years of quality play do you feel you have left? I ain't finna put no limit on myself. I mean, <laughs> hopefully, as long as I want to, hopefully I can leave this game on my on my terms and um, you know be happy with, with, with what I accomplished. But I ain't looking forward to that yet. So we got a lot more in the tank. What do you remember about your first regular season game of your career, and kind of how are you relaying that that experience to the younger guys? Um, I was ready to get in there. Um, uh, it was very exciting. Um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was it was a surreal moment. Uh, it was a home game for me, so it was different from them there. They're in the away game, um, but you know you're gonna have jitters. Um, but that's a that's a good thing. You just wanna go out there and be detailed and do everything that you practice. And now it's time to put it on showcase. Which college okay. game was the one at the dome? Say it again. Which college game was the one at the dome? I played there twice, um, back to back in my my freshman year against Oklahoma, and then we played Ohio State in the, in the playoffs. By the way, do you fall? I'm sure you fall Alabama still. Big oh, matchup sure. this weekend. I, oh, yeah. Hear a little breakdown on it, real quick. Um, you know, it was a close game last year. Um, you no, know, they had a pretty good, pretty good defense. They had a pretty good team. I mean, I feel like it's gonna be a close game this year. But I feel like, um, you know, that first game kind of gave them a boost of confidence to see um, what they had and be able to be able to showcase. And excited to see uh, Miro go out there and um, put a show on and show everybody that he's a real deal. I'm um, just excited that you know, Alabama football back and every Saturday I'm going to be talking and <laughs> going to be looking forward to them um, having a great season. But this Saturday is going to be a big one. I hope, you know, they come out with the victory. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate Thank it. You, Eric. Thank you. To what degree do you feel like uh, Sunday's an, an unveiling of, of everything that you've been working on since you got this job? Yeah, I think uh, every time you're getting ready to go play the first game of the season, you kind of have that feeling. Um, you know, you spend a lot of time in the off season watching a lot of tape, uh, evaluating the players, evaluating the scheme, and uh, excited to go out and, and be able to kind of show uh, what we've been working towards over however many past months it's been. How much fun is it to kind of devise creative things out of run conservative run packages like 12 and 13 and 21 when you've got guys like Chig and Tajay who can maybe – do more things than you normally would do out of a package like that. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously having guys that have versatile skill sets uh, that, that can be a threat in both the run game and the pass game provides you the ability to, to you know, put the defense in conflict, which is ultimately, uh, you know, our job as coaches, uh, you know, it's, it's damn near at the top of the list. So um, having those guys out there and, and, and those guys putting in the work to be able to learn the system to be able to be moved around and, and put in different spots, uh, that's been great. What does impress you the most about Tajay in, in particular, just from where he started to, to now entering the season? Yeah, I don't know if there's any, any one thing in particular as to where he started, but, I mean, he works. He loves the game of football. Um, as cliche as that is, it's, he's, he's got a, a, a cool energy about him when, when he's in here. Um, always kind of bopping around, always looking for little, little pieces of uh, information that that are going to help him perform better. So uh, it's been great having him here. How much have you learned in the last month about things that you thought might work or maybe haven't, or or things that are, has become priorities for you during the course of what you've learned? Yeah, I think getting ready for any opponent, getting getting ready again, going through any training camp. You know, you you find out who you really are. Uh, you have an idea going into camp, but. Uh, it's not real football until you put the pads on, you know what I mean? So uh, obviously we've been able to kind of figure out, um, you know, some things that, that we want to do, uh, know what our identity wants to be. And, and like I said, we get a chance here in a few days to go out and show it. For you as a play caller, you got different kinds. Like some, they like to dictate, this is what we're going to do, just stop it. And others, like they work with the flow of the game. 
What's your philosophy and approach to that? Um, whatever's going to score the most points. Um, you know, there's there's times where uh, you got to play a game a certain way based upon how what what's best for the team. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times, obviously, that that comes first and foremost. What what's going to put our team in the best position to win a football game? If that means that we go out and throw the next amount of times, or if it means we go out and run it the next amount of times, uh, we got to make sure that we're versatile enough to be able to do both. I guess in your word, what would you want the identity of this offense to be this year? Physical, fast, um, energetic. Uh, it's it's when when I feel when when you have a, a football team when you when when you have an offense more specifically um, that does those things that goes out and plays physical. Pushes piles, runs hard, um, plays fast. Not just you know no huddle tempo, but speed, um, and then goes out there and plays with a lot of energy. Uh, it's 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 fun to watch and it's fun to coach and it's fun to be a part of. How do you meld uh, wanting to play at a lot of tempo with dealing with crowd noise at the same time? Yeah, that's always a challenge. Um, with that, again, that, that luckily for us, we've got a great communicator uh, with Ryan, being able to go and, and handle the crowd noise, and he's played in hostile environments before and has had great games. So, um, it's it's not ideal, but with, with you know Ryan back there calling the shots, it, it makes that easier for sure. How much is the fact that DeAndre has been so available and, and able to practice? How much does that help the bond between? Yeah, and- I mean, it's been great. Any anytime you're you know. Your your great players are out there practicing every day, and, and it's not just Hop. Obviously, like Derek's out there, you know. What I mean, Ryan's out there. When, when, whenever our best players are able to practice and, and run as much as they have, um, only good things can come from it. There's less room now for Willis and Levis to to make a daily impression or to 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 gain ground. What what do you tell them about what their opportunity is now, what their role is now, and what can you do? beyond practice with, with them. Yeah, uh, you know, Charles and I have a plan with that and being able to make sure that um, while they, they, they still may not be getting, you know, every team rep that they were getting a couple of weeks ago, they're still getting reps. Um, those, you know, scout team looks, th- those are vital because those are full speed reps and they're going against a pretty darn good defense too. So just because, you know, it, we do we do our best uh, uh, job as coaches to be able to go and translate those plays to make sure that, they're able to go and, and, and get a game-like rep there against the defense that's playing at, at, at a pretty good level. So, um, yeah, while they may not be getting the reps with the, with the first-team offense, they're still getting reps, and, and they need to take advantage of them. We have stuff that's separate of the team. I know previous coordinators had Friday afternoon sessions or stuff yeah, like I that. Yeah, I mean, each, each guy, because, yes, yes. Has that been one of the more unique situations, just being on the offensive side of the ball, having a backup quarterback? battle like this they're both so young and still developing uh, just the way that you guys are handling it and kind of how unique it is yeah yeah because uh you know both those guys we need to continue to develop them just like you're saying and we need to find different innovative ways to create a uh, uh, to create growth with both players um and so again that that's you know part of our part of our jobs as coaches is to go and develop our team and develop our players and develop our position group and it's something that we take seriously Ryan, just be able to focus on now as opposed to everything, like the possibility of this being his last season, et cetera. Yeah, I think he's worried about winning a football game, you know what I mean, which is, again, not not to rip off a cliche for you, but I, like that's been the, at the forefront of him going out and, and attacking every day and, and just being having a laser focus as to what we're getting better at and what we're going after today. How much do you want to go in dictating your first 12, 15, yeah. first 15? Yeah, uh, you have a plan as to what you want to see, but that changes like that. Like we, if, if you know, field position, uh, uh, you know, how did we get the ball? Um, there's there's so many things that, that go into the start of a game where, you know, you can't just be, okay, this is play one, this is play two, this is play three. You know, everybody talks about the first 15. I mean, if you have a 15-play drive, you're you're you know probably into the red area already, and you're working from a different bank of plays as it is. So, we have an idea as to what we want to run and what we want to see early on in the game, and then we, you know we got to get into the flow of the game pretty quick there and, and make sure that uh, we're adjusting to the to the situations as they come up. Are there things you can do to try and 
help this offensive line in its first go around uh, together, kind of get comfortable and get in a, get in a groove because these guys haven't played together a whole lot. Some of them haven't been starters for a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you're always trying to do that. The, the most important thing for us to do is be good on first and second down. Um, you know, you, you're good on first and second down. You stay in third and manageable. Um, it, it, it keeps the the exotic pressures, the pass rushers, that they, they, they can't necessarily just sit there and tee off. Uh, so we got to do a good job being efficient on first and second down um, and, and making sure we're staying on schedule. Do you get a sense that some of these guys are eager to prove themselves after having not been starters for a while? Yeah, I think uh, as a whole, I think as a whole, uh, our offense is eager to go out there and prove themselves. You guys tried last year, Cam, at right tack a little bit, and I guess ended up moving back. What was the start of the question? I'm sorry. I said you guys tried, did the team try Dylan at, at tack a little bit last offseason, ended up moving him back to guard. Um, what was maybe learned from that, and, and do you feel like he's maybe better equipped to, to potentially play tackle? I know you weren't OC. Yeah. The, the cool thing about that is that he he never blinked at, at anything we asked him to do. Um, and so as you guys have kind of alluded to here with that position, it, it's important to make sure that it's not just uh, what's necessarily best for one particular player. It's what's, you know, how do we get our best five on the field and, and, and what combination of guys and what combination of positions gives us the best offensive line as a whole. And, um, you know, he did a he did a good job in both in both spots. You know, when he played guard, when we asked him to play tackle, uh, he went out there and performed at, at you know a winning level. So um, excited to to get him kind of back in the the scheme of things here as as he's working his way back. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks, See you guys. Good against the past this year with the changed faces, uh, particularly with Sean Murphy Bunting, uh, Aziz Alshair, and some of those guys. Absolutely, I think. Uh, the excitement, the anxiousness, the nervousness, everything that comes with week one. Um, looking forward to seeing these guys, and it's everybody, not just the new pieces, um, but everybody on our unit, just seeing them go out there and compete when it's real ball now, right? It's still more preseason. They all count now, so um, hopefully we can make some tries in the passing game. We got big tests out the gate, right? They got good playmakers on the outside, obviously an experienced, talented quarterback. So. In yeah, I think he's a guy who's played. He's he's done it. He's got the experience. Um, so I think as he gets more comfortable with what we're doing schematically, just kind of seeing where he's at, you know, where he fits in. Uh, it's just added depth right now to the room. What about Gibson too? Uh, another new guy. Yeah, great addition. Um, I'm happy we got him. He's been he's been great since he's been here. Learning another guy, you're just trying to get up to speed. They missed the ball at training camp, right? And they get here, and it's on the game week. So we're on the game plan and everything else, and you're still kind of going back a little bit to the base install stuff with them, just so they get a gauge of what we're doing schematically. So I'm excited for both those guys that the Adam um, when we did, and hopefully they can contribute here as we get going. You're pretty deep at that outside, that edge spot. How much will that help having that rotation, you know, keeping guys? Straight? I hope a bunch. I do. I hope a bunch. Um, I mean, we'll see how many we have active on game day, what that looks like. But I think, I mean, it's been noted the number of snaps Harold's played for us in the past. Uh, I mean, hopefully we can take a little bit off him with the in, with the added depth that we've created finally. Um, and then obviously with Nico. I mean, he's, he's getting up there in age, so there's going to be a little bit of a snap count on him. Not that he's going to want that at times, but we got to make sure that we're taking care of him at times too. I was doing it earlier, but uh, how much is there, a, a, not fear of the unknown, but how much for you concern of the unknown going into a week one opponent with a new quarterback? Yeah, I mean, uh, it is. It's, it's, it's different. I would say the past few years we've faced a lot of new coordinators over the past couple of years, early in the season, just even going back to last year with the Giants, not really know what they were going to look like week one. Um, but with the coordinator being the same, but with what Derek's done and where he's been and everything, you're, you're really not sure. Like, we got to make sure that we can get lined up and we can adjust to everything and play our rules. And we got to be locked in as the coaching staff on the sideline to make sure we get adjusted as, as they're changing things and doing different things that we haven't really prepared for. Tim Shane, it, it appears to be that he was a better fit in a 3-4 uh, 
thing with a four three? Is that something that you guys looked at and, and you know thought that he might be a good fit, especially? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we look at edge guys. We're looking at guys that can rush the passion and they can set the edge. Whether it's three four four three, I mean, we're a lot four down structure, just the nature of the beast because it's a more spread out game nowadays. Like the days of twenty one personnel a lot of 12 personnel with two big tight ends where you truly that three, four structure isn't, isn't quite what it used to be, you know? So we're in sub package as that stuff goes anyway. So ultimately it's guys on the edge that can affect the quarterback and set the edge. What have you seen out of Aziz that made him a good fit for the, the players to move the first time captain? Yeah, I'm not surprised by it one bit. Um, he's a total pro. He is. He, he comes in every day ready to work. Uh, he communicates. He talks to other guys. He encourages other guys. I think you feel him out on the field, just the energy, um, just everything you're kind of looking for from a leadership standpoint. And to have it at that position is huge because it is such an integral part of what we're doing defensively, being able to handle the front guys and the back end and work with both groups. Um, but not surprised one bit by what it is. Ever since he's been here, since the spring, day one, I kind of knew what this guy was and what he was going to be for us. How much, easier does it make, how much easier does it make your job as a coordinator when you've got smart inside linebackers like Aziz and like Gibbons that kind of they can kind of get everybody set in the right spots and make the calls and adjustments? Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that goes unnoticed at times, right? I think there's a comfort level in, in the front and the DBs and everybody just knowing that that guy's going to get us in the right call and get the front set the right way. And, and there's, a, there's a sense of comfort that comes with that, where we're not panicked. And that's a big thing on defense. Like, if you're out there panicked and you're caught behind the ball a little bit when they're breaking a huddle and a call might be wrong and you're trying to get things switched late, like, when guys are panicked, the outcome usually isn't very good, right? So, um, I mean, I think that's been huge. I think it's a big part of that position. Kind of the turn to play work for Harold as far as getting him ready for the start of the season and how good to have him back in the in the mix for you. Yeah, I mean it's 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 been great, man. I, I haven't noticed the ACL one bit uh, throughout training camp. Um, I'm excited to see him go out there and play. You know, I I'm, I know he's chomping at the bit too, so it'll be fun to see him out there. I'm I'm glad he's finally healthy and going to be able to contribute for us. How much different do you think uh, their offense, New Orleans offense? could be possibly without um, Kamara in the lineup. Yeah, I mean, I think just some of the matchup things that they've always done for him. Um, I mean, he's a he's been a major part of what they do on offense, whether they're trying to find ways to give him balls in the screen game, create one-on-one -on -one matchups versus backers, the mismatches. Um, there's still some of that. I mean, you go back two years ago, we played against them. And it wasn't Kamara, and they were still doing the same things, right? And still trying to pick on our backers with the running back. So, um, I mean, I think slightly, I think the run game, we'll see where that goes. Um, but overall, they're going to have guys that are going to step up, ready to go, and ready to make plays just the same. How much do you think that front are motivated by pulling off that number one run defense side from last year? Yeah, I think it's important to them. I do. Um, I think it's, it's a fine line between – being able to stop the run and then not being very good against the pass, right? So we got to navigate that and we got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be great in the run game, setting the edge, building a wall and swarming to the ball. But at the same time, we have to find ways to affect the quarterback and be better in coverage than what we were. feel better about your cornerbacks though going into this year? I do. I'm doing? excited about them. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Uh, you know what? It's interesting because they onside kick every single time. So, uh, One of the those. field position is, is a pretty big deal there for the sixth grade team. You haven't gotten any ideas from that, right? Uh, you know what? I try to, uh, my, well, my wife tells me to shut my mouth. So um, she's we like, wives do that. yeah, well, it's a good thing. So she, uh, we sit together and then sometimes she'll nudge me a little bit and say, hey, Craig, let them do their thing. So. Harris to be back there for fun. Yeah, um, I think he's done a really good job in the preseason and during training camp. He's earned the right to go back there. Um, excited for him. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we feel comfortable him being back there, catching the ball, getting upfield, and getting him some positive yards for us. Mac Lunar, I think, coming to play 
play for anybody, but especially a rookie in that type of situation. Anything you, you guys say to him and discuss with him beforehand? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's played this game his whole life. You know, he's played at a very high level at the University of Georgia. So, um, you know, I don't think it'll be too big for him, but uh, they're always going to have a little bit of nerves uh, going out there. We're just going to tell him to relax, make sure he catches the ball, and, and we're going to let his natural ability take over after that. Agree. Will you have hard and fast rules about fair catch and kickoffs? Sure. Um, you know, I think that's a game by game basis of what we want to do. Um, you know, depending on their kicker, how much hang time he's getting it, it's obviously going to be an option for us at some point in time. Um, but we'll figure that out per game and maybe in game uh, of what we want to try to do or what they're trying to do to us if we want to go and fair catch the ball. Kick returns. Yeah, um, you know, Kiaris will be back there. You know, Tajay uh, might have an opportunity. The guys that you've seen uh, during preseason, but again, uh, thought Kiaris did a really good job until his uh, when he got dinged up a little bit in Minnesota game. But uh, we're looking forward to having him back there. With you guys being inside on Sunday, you know, the shadows and those type of things. Are you going to have Kiaris? work inside some field and front? Oh yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have him out there even earlier in our bubble. Uh, out there, you know, in New Orleans, getting a getting a feel for where maybe the lights are going to be at. You know, I think that's always key for the young guys, uh, not only for our returners, but even Mike Brown as a personal protector. Where's the where's the game clock? Where's the play clock? They're going to have to find out all those different types of things. But yeah, we'll we'll be out there early for those guys to take a look at that stuff. What about kickoffs? How how are you going to handle that with Nick Paul? Are you just going to do it, or is there? Yeah, again, that's going to be you know game by game. Um, have no issues with Nick and his leg strength, and I think he does a really good job. You know, even watching some stuff that he did last year um, at New England, whether it's a touchback or them trying to kick the ball. Um, you know, we'll we'll continue to discuss that with Coach Rabel and Nick too, um, and see what we want to do to help us win the game. Nick has said that during the off season he worked on kickoffs. Like, well, what do you do to, to, to work on that? Is just kicking the ball? I mean, what, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you know, whether it's him getting his timing down, his steps, whether he wants to kick the ball right or whether he wants to kick the ball to the left or in the middle, uh, those are the things that usually kickers work on in the off season. Um, you know, a lot of them still try to, you know, gain strength. Um, on their kickoffs or even try to do some fancy type kickoffs, whether it be a squib, a mortar kick right or left. So he, he's worked on a bunch of different things and uh, we're, we're obviously excited to have him. What are your thoughts about him maybe from afar and then what's he been like since he's been here in the building? Yeah, I mean, guy who's played a very long time in, in the National Football League. Uh, just love the way he's already interacting with Ryan Stonehouse and, and Morgan Cox. But uh, here's a guy who's made pretty close to 90% uh, field goals his last three years um, and has done it at a high level. So uh, really excited to have a veteran player like that come on in and, and you know continue to even help out Ryan Stonehouse um, on stuff that he ends up seeing too. How do you go about it? When he came in, he was doing a lot of talking. And he's since changed, and he does a lot more listening now. How did that? Play I'm sorry, out? I missed your first part. Here, so oh, when yeah. he first came in, he was doing a lot of talking, and then he sort of changed over to do a lot more listening. How did that sort of play out, and how has that benefited? I think that goes with a lot of rookies. You know, they want to fit in. Uh, Sometimes it's better just to listen than to talk. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Kiris has done a really good job of just, you know, listening and trying to understand what we want from him, um, and whether it's hey, we need you to catch the ball and get upfield, or whether we need you to catch the ball and go to the big field, or whether we need to, to be, you know, have great communications with fair catches. Uh, he, he's, he's learned, he's starting to mature even more, and, and I'm excited for him. What do you uh, do in the process of trying to develop Kate York? Because I presume that the practice reps, the bulk of them are going to Nick Folk to get ready for the game. Yeah, well, with Nick, you know, we'll continue to handle Nick um, on how he wants to be handled. And, and and when I say that is, you know, how many kicks does Nick want per week? You know, because we're going to watch his reps, obviously, him being an older veteran player. Uh, but we're going to have an opportunity to develop Cade. Uh, we're excited about it. Um, you know, and I'm I'm just getting to get to know faces with him right now and uh, learning from him a little bit, too, of what he likes. So um, I'm excited. We, we went back and watched the film from the LSU days, too. And, uh, you know, we're excited to work with him and develop him. Brian was joking the other day that he has no idea what goes 
into developing a kicker like kids. So from your vantage point, what goes into that? How do you develop a Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things that we, we try to do to help develop Kate or any type of young kicker is, um, you know, find out what they're about mentally. Um, and then we obviously know a lot of stuff that is physical with them, but just getting to know um, them and what they like and angles on their kicks, things like that, um, you know, that that's going to help us develop Cade a lot more um, because obviously he's got some God-given ability that's really good. I mean, a lot of people saw that um, two years ago at LSU and even last year. I mean, he's got extremely strong legs. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to do our little things that we can help him with. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're still excited for him to be here and help develop him. Mike said that he thinks kick return blocking is the hardest skill in football what what makes that hard to teach yeah well here's the biggest thing you're you're standing flat-footed um you have to see the ball kicked if you're a frontline player because obviously you don't want to give up a surprise onside kick and then you have got to turn and run as fast as you can to a certain yard line or a certain landmark depending on what's going on while also taking a look at the guy that you might have to block okay in the NFL, not a lot of guys just run straight down the field. They might twist. They might do a bunch of different things. Uh, so all those things come into effect of uh, trying to block at least single block on kickoff return. So what we try to do is put these guys in the hardest situation that they can possibly get into. Um, we tell them to turn and run as fast as they possibly can, get to that landmark, turn and run, and find their guy, um, and still make a block that as guys going 20 miles an hour uh, downfield where you're standing at a standstill position so uh, again we put them in what we feel is like the hardest thing for them to do and um, you know try to give them the techniques and fundamentals uh, that they need to uh, make a single block the yeah. roster's been pared down uh, these past few weeks are you happy with who's left in regards to those return teams on special teams and how much work have all of them as a group actually gotten in the last few weeks together yeah I mean you know each week uh, during preseason you, you kind of start realizing hey these guys are doing a really good job they're developing on offense and defense are doing a really good job on special teams uh, so us as special teams coaches we've got to look into the future all the time um, and, and we felt like the guys that end up making our roster or even the practice squad uh, develop on special teams, and um, I'm excited for all of them and for them to get an opportunity to play. Who are some of the guys that maybe emerged as the top gunner candidates? Yeah, I mean, we, we got some guys out there, obviously some veteran uh, with Nick Westbrook, Chris Moore, um, Anthony Kendall did a real nice job in the preseason, Matt Jackson, uh, rookie from um, Eastern Kentucky. Uh, those are the guys that, that stood out to us and, and did a really good job and looking forward to them um, hopefully going out there and making some plays for us. you got 11 rookies on this roster. Obviously, a lot of those will be playing on special teams Sunday. How concerned are you about rookie mistakes and penalties that might come just because of inexperience? Sure. I mean, there's always going to be rookie mistakes. Our job is to really limit them um, as much as we possibly can, try to put them in the best situations uh, that they can get into. So that's our job as coaches uh, to get these guys ready, um, even their rookies or second year players or fifth year players. But, um, you know, I, they're willing to learn and, and we're excited for them. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.